好，各位同学晚安。呃，今天很不错的，有出海捕鱼，呃，上了一堂属于呃期刊论文的课程，呃，这个是蛮固定的同学的课程。那把这一篇论文也讨论完了，啊、呃，是期刊的论文，蛮不错的。等于说今天心情也蛮愉快的，哦、呃，心情蛮轻松的。有只要每天都能够有接触到一点英语教学，哦、呃，就可以。哦，把，呃，累积在心里面的垃圾可以稍微舒缓啊、呃，倒一倒，在外面透透气啊、呃，这样不错。好，那我们今天晚上就是，呃，端午节连假，当然，呃，也要为呃这一次泰鲁格事件啊、呃，表达个人非常的呃哀痛之意，也希望相关单位能够查明整个事故的原因啊、呃，这样子。所以，我们还是今天稍微呃，把 the catcher in the right 这个部分来做一下朗读啊，就呃，清明假期啊，这种长假啊，我们大家就轻松一点啊，不要太投入这种动脑过度，这样不好。好，那我们就来看一下我，我看看能不能。把这一整个章节就朗读完，我不知道能不能，因为应该还有个六七页哦，我就按照正常的速度、平常心这样子来朗读。中间如果有比较呃念的不好的地方哦、呃，那我们就用呃导读的那个时间，我再来做更正。我们入个喉就直接开始。我前一次朗读到了两百四十一页结束，我就从两百四十一页一一路往后看看能不能啊、哦，很轻松的把它整个章节讲完，呃，朗读完。<咳>那在朗读之前，也希望同学能够平常也能够做朗读的训练。你可以用跟读的方式，也就是说，你的你可以先听网络的，或是说其他的来源，不见得是要小说啦。现在很方便，网络上面都有这种发音的，哦，这种点选，跟我之前做的 I C R T Easy News 一样，你可以跟着朗读试着念念看。那我讲过说，我们学文法最好验收的方式就是看你能不能写出正确的句子来，这个是实质能看到。你说能不能朗读？那呃，能不能阅读那个比较抽象一点？因为很难去很明确的实质的量化出来，你到底读懂了还是没有读懂？这个部分比较难，因为你是自己读自己理解。第二个是说，我们在听哦、呃，不管你是看电影、听 CD、听音乐、听哦、呃、收音机等等。要怎么样去验证你的听的练习成效好不好？听写是一种哦，就是你听，然后写听，你要听你没有听过的素材，否则你会背下来。看你写的对不对？为什么会听不懂？听写，所以听写训练我也我也有开课程，同学如果有这方面的需求，我们可以来做听写的正音训练这样子。那。自己听，不要忘了一定要写，否则很多同学就会留于听听归听，但是听完了之后呢，他换了一个素材，他又听不懂了，等于说他反复的听相同的东西就背起来了。所以我们一般在做听这个听力训练的时候，都会呃一定期的一段时间来做听写，听到写出来，好这样子。再进阶一点，就是听到朗读或者直接做，呃，朗读的训练，就是像我这样子，直接把文章拿出来，开始报纸也可以，新闻也可以，各种题材都可以来开始直接念，这样子。最后，最后实作就是跟，呃，真人对话，哦、呃，英语对话啊、呃，这这个交互的不断的反复的训练就会学得很好。那我。个人教学经验发觉是同学学文法归学文法，但是学了文法是拿来做题目，他不是拿来写，而且很少动笔写，写出来的东西，如果
不是找专业的人看的话，大概就会变中式英文，因为看你作文的人他本身也是中式英文哦，这样子。我们先拿开学历这些哦，先不要看。第二个是说，有人听了很久，可是一开口五音不全，或是讲的英文很难懂，这个也就表示说没有把实质你在听这个部分的付出转换成呃有效的转换成实际使用啊。这个部分我们也可以刚胸口部啊，来用客制化或是用呃网络课程来协助同学达到能够转换的目的啊。这是我个人。的专业啦，好，所以同学不必担心说到底有没有效。好，那我刚胸口不完的时候，我就开始来做朗读，从一百四十二页 ，You're aware of, of course 这边开始，我直接往下念。You're aware of course that he's terribly concerned about you. I know it. I know he is. I said. Apparently, before he phoned me, he just had a long, rather harrowing. Letter from your latest headmaster to the effect that you were making absolutely no effort at all, cutting classes, coming unprepared to all your classes in general, being an all around. I didn't cut any classes. You weren't allowed to cut any. There were a couple of them I didn't attend once in a while, like that oral expression I told you about. But I didn't cut any. I didn't feel at all like discussing it. The coffee made my stomach feel a little better, but I still had this awful headache. Mr. Antolini lit another cigarette. He smoked like a fin. Then he said, "Frankly, I don't know what the hell to say to you. Hold it. I know I'm very hard to talk to. I realize that." I have a feeling that you're writing for some kind of a terrible, terrible fall, but I don't honestly know what kind. Were you listening to me? Yes. You could tell he was trying to concentrate and all. It may be the kind where, at the age of thirty, you sit in some bar hating everybody who comes in looking us. If he might have played football in college, then again. You may pick up just enough education to hate people who say it's a secret between he and I, or you may end up in some business office throwing paper clips at the nearest stenographer. I just don't know. But do you know what I'm driving at, at all? Yes,、yeah, sure. I said I did too. But you're wrong about that hating business. I mean, about hating football players and all. You really are. I don't hate too many guys. What I may do, I may hate them for a little while, like this guy Strat later I knew at Pensy, and this other boy Robert Ackley. I hated them once in a while. I admit it, but it doesn't last too long. Is what I mean. After a while, if I didn't see them. If they didn't come in the room, or if I didn't see them in the dining room for a couple of meals, I sort of missed them. I mean, I sort of missed them. Mister Antolini didn't say anything for a while. He got up and got another hunk of ice and put it in his drink. Then he sat down again. You could tell he was thinking. I kept wishing, though, that. He'd continue the conversation in the morning instead of now, but he was hot. People are mostly hot to have a discussion when you're not. All right, listen to me a minute now. I may not word this as memorably as I'd like to, but I'll write you a letter about it in a day or two. Then you can get it all straight. But listen now, anyway. He started concentrating again. Then he said, "This fall, I think you're writing for as a special kind of fall, a horrible kind. The man falling isn't permitted to feel or hear himself hit bottom. He just keeps falling and falling. The whole arrangement's designed 
for men who at some time or other in their lives were looking for something their own environments couldn't supply them with. What they thought their own environment couldn't supply them with. So they gave up looking. They gave it up before they ever really even got started. You follow me? Yes, sir. Sure? Yes. He got up and poured some more booze in his glass. Then he sat down again. He didn't say anything for quite a long time. I don't want to scare you, he said, but I can very clearly see you dying nobly, one way or the other, one way or another, for some highly unworthy cause. He gave me a funny look. If I write something down for you, will you read it carefully and keep it? Yes, sure, I said. I did too. Still have the paper he gave me. He went over to this desk on the other side of the room and without sitting down wrote something on a piece of paper. Then he came back and sat down with the paper in his hand. Oddly enough, this wasn't written by a practicing poet. It was written by a psychoanalyst named Wilhelm Steckel. Here's what it, are you still with me? Yes, sure I am. Here's what he said. The mark of the immature man is that he wants to die nobly for a cause, while the mark of the mature man is that he wants to live humbly for one. <laughs> he leaned over and handed it to me. I read it right when he gave it to me, and then I thanked him and all and put it in my pocket. It was nice of him to go to all that trouble. It really was. The thing was, though, I didn't feel much like concentrating. Boy, I felt so damn tired all of a sudden. You could tell he wasn't tired at all, though. He was pretty oiled up, for one thing. I think that one of these days, he said, you're going to have to find out where you want to go. And then you've got to start going there. But immediately, you can't afford to lose a minute, not you. I nodded, because he was looking right at me and all. But I wasn't too sure what he was talking about. I was pretty sure I knew, but I wasn't too positive at the time. I was too damn tired. And I hate to tell you, he said, but I think that once you have a fair idea where you want to go, your first move will be to apply yourself in school. You have to. You're a student. Whether the idea appeals to you or not, you're in love with knowledge, and I think you'll find once you get past all that, all the Mr. Vincent's and their aura comp. Mr. Vincent, I said, he meant all the Mr. Vincent's, not all the Mr. Vin Vincent's. I shouldn't have interrupted him, though. All right, the Mr. Vincent's. Once you get past all the Mr. Vincent's, you are going to start getting closer and closer. That is, if you want to and if you look for it and wait for it to the kind of information that will be very, very dear to your heart. Among other things, you'll find that you are not the first person who was ever confused and frightened and even sickened by human behavior. You're by no means alone on that score. You'll be excited and stimulated to know many, many men have been just as troubled morally and spiritually as you are right now. Happily, some of them kept records of their troubles. You'll learn from them. If you want to, just as someday, if you have something to offer, someone will learn something from you. It's a beautiful reciprocal, reciprocal arrangement. And it isn't education. It's history. It's poetry. He stopped and took a big drink out of his highball. Then he started again. Boy, he was really hot. I was glad I didn't try to stop him or anything. I'm not trying to tell you, he said, that... 
only educated and scholarly men are able to contribute something valuable to the world. It's not so. But I do say that educated and scholarly men, if they're brilliant and creative to begin with, which unfortunately is rarely the case, tend to leave infinitely more valuable records behind them than men do who are merely brilliant and creative. They tend to express themselves more clearly, and they usually have a passion for following their thoughts through to the end. And most important, nine times out of ten, they have more humility than the unscholarly thinker. Do you follow me at all? Yes, sir. He didn't say anything again for quite a while. I don't know if you've ever done it, but it's sort of hard to sit around waiting for somebody to say something when they're thinking at all. It really is. I kept trying not to yawn. It wasn't that I was bored or anything. I wasn't, but I was so damn sleepy all of a sudden. Something else an academic education will do for you. If you go along with it, at a considerable distance, it'll begin to give you an idea what size might you have, what it'll, what it'll fit, and maybe what it wasn't, what it won't. After a while, you have an idea what kind of thoughts your particular size might would be wearing. For one thing, it may save you an extraordinary amount of time trying on ideas that don't suit you, aren't becoming to you. You begin to know your true measurements and dress your mind accordingly. Then all of a sudden I yawned. What a rude bastard, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> Mr. Antonini just laughed. No, come on, he said, and got up. We'll fix up the couch for you. I followed him and he went over to this clo closet and tried to take down some sheets and blankets and stuff that was on the top shelf. But he couldn't do it with this highball glass in his hand. So he drank it and then put the glass down on the floor. And then he took the stuff down. I helped him bring it over to the couch. We both made the bed together. He wasn't too hot at it. He didn't tuck anything in very tight. I didn't care, though. I couldn't slip standing up. I was so tired. Where are you women? They're okay. I was being a lousy conversationist, but I didn't feel like it. How Sally? The new old Sally Hayes. I introduced him once. She's all right. I had a date with her this afternoon. Boy, it seemed like 20 years ago. We don't have too much in common anymore. Hell of a pretty girl. What about the other girl? The one you told me about in man? Oh, Jan Gallagher. She's all right. I'm probably going to give her a bus tomorrow. We were all done making up the couch. Then, it's all yours. Mr. Anton Linney said, I don't know what the hell you're going to do with those legs of yours. That's all right. I'm used to short beds, I said. Thanks a lot, sir. You and Mrs. Antolini really saved my life tonight. Do you know where the bathroom is? If there's anything you want, just hold her. I'll be in the kitchen for a while. Will the light bother you? No, heck, no. Thanks a lot. All right. Good night, Hanson. Good night, sir. Thanks a lot. He went out in the kitchen, and I went in the bathroom and got undressed and all. I couldn't brush my teeth because I didn't have any toothbrush with me. I didn't have any pajamas either, and Mr. Antolini forgot to lend me some, so I just went back in the living room and turned off this little lamp next to the couch, and then I got in bed with just my shorts on. It was way too short for me, the couch, but I really couldn't sleep standing up without batting an eyelash. I laid awake for just a couple of seconds thinking about all that stuff Mr. Antolini told me about finding out the size of your mind and all. He was really a pretty smart guy, 
but I couldn't keep my goddamn eyes open, and I fell asleep. Then something happened. I don't even like to talk about it. I woke up all of a sudden. I don't know what time it was or anything, but I woke up. I felt something on my head, some guy's head. Boy, it really scared the hell out of me. What it was, it was Mr. Antonini's head. <laughs> what he was doing was, he was sitting on the floor, right next to the couch, in the dark and all. And he was sort of patting me, or patting me on the goddamn head. Boy, I bet I jumped about a thousand feet. What the hell are you doing? I said, nothing. I'm simply sitting here, admiring. <laughs> what are you doing anyway? I said over again. I didn't know what the hell to say. I mean, I was embarrassed as hell. How about keeping your voice down? I'm simply sitting here. I have to go anyway, I said. Boy, was I nervous. I started putting on my damn pants in the dark. I could hardly get them on. I was so damn nervous. I know more damn perverts at schools and all than anybody you ever met. And they're always being perverted. When I'm around, you have to go where Mr. Antonini said he was very. He was trying to act very goddamn casual and cool and all, but he wasn't any too goddamn cool. Take my word. I left my bags and all at the station. I think maybe I better go down and get them. I have all my stuff in them. They'll be there in the morning. Now go back to bed. I'm going to bed myself. What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter. It's just that all my money is stuffed in one of the bags. I'll be right back. I'll get a cab. I'll be right back. I said, "Boy, I was falling all over myself in the dark." The thing is, it isn't mine. The money, it's my mother's, and I. Don't be ridiculous, Holden. Get back in that bed. I'm going to bed myself. The money will be there, safe and sound, in the morning. No, no kidding. I gotta get going. I really do. I was standing near all dressed already, except that I couldn't find my tie. I couldn't remember where I put my tie. I put on my jacket and all without it. Old Mister Antonini was sitting now in a big chair, a little ways away from me, watching me. He was dark and all, and I couldn't see him. So hot, but I knew he was watching me. All right. He was still boozing too. I could see his trusty highball glass in his hand. You're a very, very strange boy. I know it. I said. I didn't even look around much for my tie, so I went without it. Goodbye, sir. I said. Thanks a lot. No kidding. He kept walking right behind me when I went to the front door, and when I rang the elevator bell, he stays in the damn doorway. All he said was that business about my being a very, very strange boy. Again, strange, my ass. Then he waited in the doorway and all till the goddamn elevator came. I never waited so long for an elevator in my whole goddamn life. I swear, I didn't know that. What the hell to talk about what I was waiting for the elevator? And he kept standing there. So I said, I'm gonna start reading some good books. I really am. I mean, you have to say something. It was very embarrassing. You grab your bags and screw right on back here again. I'll leave the door unlatched. Thanks a lot. I said goodbye. The elevator was finally there. I got in and went down. Boy, I was shaking like a madman. I was sweating too. When something perverted like that happens, I start sweating like a bastard. The kind of stuffs happened to me about twenty times since I was a kid. Can't stand it. Oh, 非常好看，非常好玩。哦，这个又又看的时候，哦，真的是会会心一笑。那 hold it， 蛮好玩的。好，我就居然把哦这七页，大概有将近七页念完了。哦，这个是算朗读。当然中间有卡卡的地方了。我们后面解签的时候，哦，我们再来做哦修正都可以。好，感谢同学。呃，廉价哦，这个清明廉价的假期啊、呃，第二天啊、呃，希望同学啊、呃、也能够利用时间在家，呃
沾染一点人文气息，也可以看看书啦。哦，这样子，不管中文、英文都可以啊、哦。我们是鼓励读书的啊，这种读书人。我讲的读书人不是学问很呃那个学问很高，是阅读，你有阅读的兴趣跟习惯的啊，这种叫做呃 readers 啊这样。好，那我们今天就呃非常愉快的朗读到这边，感谢同学，晚安，我们明天再见。